Hi, this is continuation of my build your own security camera series. In the last video, I spoke about security camera and one of the thing I said to capture real time events is having a support of RTSP protocol. RTSP is real time streaming protocol where we can stream real time audio and video images uh, and use it in a Python program. So today I'm going to show once you have the camera set up and RTSP enabled, I'm going to show how you can capture the events using OpenCV. And also I'm going to next show how you can do face detection uh, based on the frame of the images. So let's get started. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is my camera is set up. Uh, you can check my video where I show like camera setup and everything. Uh, I have put it in my uh, video comments or you can click the link on the top. I have an entire series, so watch it. There are multiple uh, tips and tricks on uh, what you can do with our own security camera. So once I have the security camera, I have RTSP enabled. Now I'm importing CV2, which is nothing but the open CV package. And IM utils is just to, it's an image utilities where I can resize or play around with the images, right? So I'm importing both of this. Then what I'm doing is I am basically ca calling the uh, comp CV2 uh, computer which is open CV2 video capture function. And then I am giving my RTSP URL. So once you have your camera set up and enabled RTSP, it will give you a URL. There is nothing but the RTSP stream of protocol, username and password. This is your local LAN IP, wireless IP address to which your camera is connected. So if you have Wi-Fi router and if you have an uh, Wi-Fi that you are configured, so it will be within that LAN and it is just a URL that um, that your RTSP provider gives you. And then I am uh, basically uh, calling it as a video stream. That's what I'm doing. So once I have this, I will get the video stream out of it. And once I have the video stream, I have to continuously keep looking for any activity within the video stream. So I'm just starting an while true function. It will continuously keep on running until I hit the Q button. So that's where if you see below, I am telling like if key equal to uh, the Q button, then break uh, the break the particular loop. Right? Otherwise, it will keep on running till then. So when it is true, what I'm doing is I am basically calling the video cap dot read function. And in case if the video cap does not return any frame, it will be basically telling tell nothing in the frame and break the loop. In case if it is there, then it's going to go to the else loop. And then there I am resizing it to 1280 by 640. You can leave it as it is just that I want only a particular portion of my uh, screen to be occupied with the video. So I'm just resizing it. I'm just uh, showing and uh, just text the telling like my security system and I am passing the frame. So it will just show on the top the name as my security system. You can have any name over here and I am passing the frame and then it will start waiting for the uh, key. Right, it's going to keep on doing that and start waiting for the key. If you press Q, it's going to come out. It's going to destroy all window and come out. Else, it will keep on showing the camera. So this is a simple program to capture your real-time video stream from your camera. Let me quickly run this. Uh, I'm just going to go to the top and uh, run this one. And you can see as it starts, it's going to start uh, showing my uh, camera over here. Right. So this is one. It will also like uh, be able to monitor my activity, whatever I do. I'm going to quit this, uh, press the Q button and it has come out. Now, now I have the base program. This is the base for everything. Now think about if you want to record a particular video, you can do that in a program. And so the reason is if you record every frame, uh, if you take a typically home security system, um, uh, there will be nobody in the frame. It will keep on recording 24 by 7 and it will occupy all, all your cloud space or local memory. You want to record only key events. When you see a human, when you see an animal or when you see a particular object, then you can do that, that you can programmatically control. So next I'm going to do a face detection. So for that, I'm going to the next program. And here everything is same. The only thing is I'm importing MTCNN face detector package. Uh, you can just do a pip, pip install MTCNN. Uh, MTCNN uh, package. I have a detailed video on MTCNN as well and I will put it in the video description. You can go and look at I'm talking about how you can do face capture, how you can detect faces, how you can verify faces, right? Uh, so uh, you can do that and then I am calling the MTCNN detector function. 
uh, MTCNN uh, basically constructor to get the detector object. And I'm doing the same thing as I did in the previous one. I am basically calling the video capture. And here I'm setting like basically my buffer size as one. The reason is my system, uh, MTCNN is basically a neural network and it requires uh, a good amount of compute uh, for processing or inference. Now, I don't have a GPU in my system. I have only CPU. So rather than uh, basically uh, continuously running it, my inference will take time because I don't have a GPU. So I'm just uh, setting the buffer size to be only the current buffer. But if you have a GPU in place, the inference will be very fast and you can disable it. The reason is I don't want the frame to get buffered uh, so that there is a lag. I always want my current frame to come in. And that's what I'm doing here as well. In the while true, every time I go and reset my frames to zero. So basically, if my video inference takes like, say, like uh, I'm just giving an example, 600 milliseconds, I will have only frame every 600 milliseconds from the beginning. I, I am losing the frame in between. That's because I have a CPU. I don't want the latency to show up. So that's why I'm just setting the frame to zero. And then I'm calling the same video capture dot read function, which will return me the frames and, and the return object. If the return object is false, I am just telling uh, break it, right? Now there's nothing in the frame. Now, if it is true, I am again resizing the frame and I am calling the MTCNN detector detect face method. What the detect face method will do is it will take a frame and it will tell the x, y uh, with the night coordinate of the face image so that I can draw a bounding box over there. So that's what it does. It will give me a result object. The result object will nothing print your face and also your facial features like what is the eye location, what is the nose location and what is your mouth location and all these things it will uh, print. But for, for me, I'm only interested in face overall, not the individual uh, face uh, key points, right? So I'm just printing it so that you can see, see the output. And then what I'm doing is, if the, if the result object is greater than zero, that means it finds something, it's a list object. So it's, if it's find something, then I am basically getting the bounding box location uh, from that. And then I am drawing a uh, rectangle using the CV2 function, open CV2 function. In the rectangle, I am giving the bounding box, bounding box height and width and everything so that it uh, draws like an uh, rect uh, draw, draws like a square box around my face. And just I am giving an again a name to it. Uh, and then I'm showing that pre frame the what I have. And the same thing. Uh, in case if I press a Q, it will break. It will release the video object as well as uh, it will uh, destroy basically all the CV2 window. That's what I'm telling over here. So this is the MTNN, the MTCNN phase detector I have. Now I'm going to change this to MTCNN phase detection and I'm going to run this program. So now I am running it. So it uses TensorFlow in the background and it takes some time to start. But once it starts, you can uh, basically see the video will come in. It's able to track my facial features. And uh, if I am uh, moving around, it's able to track along my face. You can see on the bottom, all the key points are getting printed. The confidence level, it's a face is there or not. Uh, the left eye, the nose, the mouth, uh, left part, all the coordinates getting printed. You can use whatever you want to detect. But you can see there's a lag in the video. Uh, the reason is I don't have an uh, GPU. I have only a CPU, so I am uh, basically using the uh, CPU over here. But if you have a GPU, you can see basically it's pretty fast. Uh, so that's about it in the video. Uh, uh, thank you very much. And uh, in the next one, what I will do is I will go around and do how you can do face verification uh, uh, basically using the security camera. The reason is if somebody is coming into the house, you want to see if it's a verified face or not and maybe accordingly record events and everything. That's about it. Thank you very much.